Section 10-2, Arithmetic Sequences and Series. Arithmetic Sequence, we have 3, 7, 11, 15, and 19. This is an arithmetic sequence because we are adding the same value each time to get the next term. So in this case, we're adding 4 every time. To find the common difference, you take any one of the terms and you subtract the term before it. So like 7 minus 3, that's 4. We could take 11 minus 7, that's 4. So the common difference is 4. Find the next four terms. Start with 19 and keep adding four. So we have 23, 27, 31, 35. Find the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. A sub n, the nth term, is equal to, take the first term and add on multiples of four. So we have n minus one times the common difference. And in our specific example, a sub n is equal to three plus n minus 1 times 4. So the first term is 3, and we would get that because we're going to take 1 minus 1 and get 0 and add nothing. Then the second term, uh, we would add 1, 4. So 1 times 4 and then add that to 3. And then the third term, uh, we would add 2, 4s. We have 3 minus 1 times 4. So to get the third term, start with the first one, add 1, 2, 4s, and then you would get the third term. This is the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Now if we want the recursive formula, uh, we have a sub n equals a sub n minus one. So to get the next term, take the one before it and add the common difference. But you have to say what a sub one is. You gotta tell, you gotta tell the, the reader where to start. So in our case, a sub n equals 3, no, 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 that's the, that's the first term. So a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 4, and I was thinking a sub 1 is equal to 3. Example 3, nth terms. Find the 68th term of the arithmetic sequence 25, 17, 9, keep on going. So we want the 68th term. That's equal to 25, that's the first term, plus 68 minus 1, and now we need the common difference. 17 minus 25 is negative 8, so we need to multiply that times negative 8. We have 25 plus 67 times negative 8, and that is equal to negative, so the 68th term is negative 511. Find the first term of the arithmetic sequence for which a sub 25 is 139, and the common difference is 3 fourths. So 139 is equal to a sub 1 plus, uh, we have 25 minus 1 times the common difference, which is 3 fourths. 139 is equal to a sub 1 plus 24 times 3 fourths. Well, 24 divided by 4 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18. So we have 139 equals a sub 1 plus 18, and then we just need to minus 18. So a sub 1 equals 121. So the answer is 121. If two non-consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence are known, the terms between them can be calculated. These terms are called arithmetic means. In the sequence below, 17, 27, and 37 are the arithmetic means between 7 and 47. So between 7 and 47, there are 1, 2, 3 arithmetic means. Write an arithmetic sequence that has 4 arithmetic means between 4.3 and 12.8. So we have 4.3, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4 arithmetic means, and then 12.8. Well, let's take 12.8 and minus 4.3, and we get 8.5. Now to go from 4.3 to 12.8, we add the common difference once, twice, three times, four times, and then a fifth time. So five times the common difference should be a total of 8.5. Now we divide by five and we get 1.7. So 4.3 plus 1.7 is six, and then we have 7.7, uh, then we would have 9.4 and finally 11.1 then if you add on another 1.7 you get the 12.8
Arithmetic series is the indicated sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So if you have an arithmetic sequence to get the arithmetic series, you just add the values of the arithmetic sequence. Find the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. So the 100th partial sum of the natural numbers would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus keep on going and then plus 97 plus 98 plus 99 and then plus 100. Well if you take 1 plus 100 you get 101. And then if you take 2 plus 99 you get 101. And then 3 plus 98 is 101. And if you keep taking these two at a time there should be 50 of those. So we can take 50 times 101 and that's 5050. So the first the partial sum of an arithmetic series is equal to, we take the number of terms we have, divide that by 2, that's where we get the 50, and then we multiply that times the first term plus the last term. Now the nth term is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Uh, so we can replace this a sub n with this little formula right there. So this is the one we probably use most of the time, but there is another one and it's just really the result of a replacement. So we have a sub one plus, a sub one plus n minus one, and then times the common difference. Now that's equal to n over two times, two times a sub one plus n minus one times d. So that's why you see two different equations in this box down here one that we probably use the most, and then there's this one also. That's the result of the replacement. Find the indicated sum of each arithmetic series. Uh, so S sub, hmm, we don't know how many terms there are from negative 5 to 317. So we have N over 2 times negative 5 plus, uh, well, we know that's going to be 317, but we have to find the N. But a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now we want, uh, we want to find n. We know that 317 is equal to negative 5 plus n minus 1. And then we need the common difference. So 2 minus negative 5, that's 7. So we need to multiply this by 7. Let's add 5. 322 equals n minus 1 times 7. Let's divide by 7. That'll be 46 equals n minus 1. So n must be 47. Now we can finish this over here. We want the 47th partial sum, which is 47 over 2 times, that's really going to be 312. Let's go to the calculator. We have 47 divided by 2 and then times, uh, well, 312. And we get 7,000. 332. Let's find the 28th partial sum of this series. So we need the 28th partial sum, which is going to be 28 over 2 times 27 plus, we need a sub n, we need the last term. So a sub 28 is equal to a sub 1, well actually we know a sub 1, 27 plus, uh, we have 28 minus 1, and now we need the common difference, which is 14 minus 27, that's negative 13. So the common difference is negative 13. So a sub 28 is equal to 27 plus 27 times negative 13. So 27 times 27 times negative 13, and that's, uh, no, not times, I mean plus, 27 plus. 27 times negative 13. I'm like, that number is way too big. Uh, so that's going to be right there, negative 324. So the 28th partial sum is 28 over 2 times 27 plus negative 324. We have 28 divided by 2 and then times 27 minus 324. And we get negative 4,158. On the last one, we have sigma notation. 
Uh, so we need S sub, well, how many terms do we have? Let's, let's investigate that. If we had N equals one to five, that'd be five terms. But we could find that out by taking five minus one, that's four, that's one short. So if we add one, we get the five terms. So if this said N equals two to five, that's four terms. But five minus two is three, we're one short. So that's gonna be four terms. So to find out how many terms we're gonna have, we take 28 minus six, which is 22. So 28 minus six, that's 22, but that'll be one short. So there's really 23 terms. So S sub 23 is equal to 23 divided by two, 23 divided by two times, we need the first term, uh, five times six, which is 30, minus 17, that's going to be 13. And then we need the last term. We need to know the value we get when we plug 28 in. So five times 28 minus 17, five times 28, and then minus 17, that's equal to 123, so 123. Now we can uh, find the answer. We got 23 divided by two, then times, 13 plus 123, and we get an answer of 1,000, 1,564.